Hey everybody, welcome back. We apologize for the interruption. Um, unfortunately, my phone overheated. So, um, and which surprised me because it is 10.30 in the morning and it's not even that hot out. But my phone overheated anyways and it, it caused all of my apps that I was running to crash, including Instagram. And so we lost what we had before on the live stream. Um, but we are midway through planting so we can still demonstrate what we're doing. It's, it's not, it's not like we almost finished no. what we were doing and we that yeah, like <laughs> thankfully we can still show you guys how to do this, um, with these zip grow towers, uh, which is what we're using in one of our hydroponic systems here. So I'm going to keep this in the shade the whole time now. Yes. Um, but we'll just give an overview of what we have done. So we have taken the inserts out of the tower. Um, and uh, we have placed the plants in the inserts, the transplants, and here we have tender green mustard. Uh, you can do eight to 10 plants per tower. That's usually pretty good. Um, and uh, as you can see, as far as how these towers work, uh, so we have these plastic inserts here that are made from downcycled plastic water bottles, uh, and then a felt wicking strip inset about an inch uh, from the outside of the tower, which is gonna be here because you can see that's where the veggie plants are facing. Uh, and then we kind of just like, lay the veggie plants on the wicking strip at an angle very very simple and as i was saying before um this is one of those things that looks like a complicated space age technology but it's not it's actually very simple um and so yeah and how this works then now that we have laid out our plants Close them up, just like that. They fold shut like a book. That's it. You might want to very gently round these down so that they stay closed. Very, very simple. You want to try an alley? So this is organic hydroponics. We are using organic nutrients. All right, so let's place the let's place uh, that one on the table actually. Um, so, as I was showing before, we have this tool right here that is specifically designed for these towers, the Zipro towers, and uh, we use this tool to pull the inserts that contain the plants and that serve as the rooting medium for the plants in and out. So what we do, so I like to lay the tower on its side like that, move this over here, and this one's on the bottom, just uh, sort of guide it in initially, and then what we're going to do, do you mind holding the other end and making sure it stays straight, and what we're going to do is just pull, that's it, and uh, the plants are sandwiched in between the two halves of the plastic insert, just like that. Let's go all the way to the bottom. That's it, there's one. Do you want to try the next one in Nelly? Sure. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, we had a nice garden update going, um, but in my phone over here, it seems like the entire live stream was lost. <laughs> That's usually what happens with Instagram. Like, if, it, if Instagram is forced quit during the middle of a live stream, then I'm always gonna have you try it. Oh well, I'll have you do the next one the next time we do this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this is planted. Uh, do you mind uh, manning the camera? You can see this. As I said, soil is amazing, but in this case, we don't need soil. So if you're in a situation where you don't have a lot of space and gardening and soil is very impractical, this is a good solution. You don't have to just do container gardens. Container gardens can be great, but compared to a vertical hydroponic system, they don't really produce a lot. And trust me, I know, I help my partner manage her container garden and you know, you don't really get that much out of it. Like you will get much more out of one of these systems than a container garden, especially if you're growing leafy greens. And right here we have tender green mustard. Um, and so we'll, we'll get so much more production out of this. 
So anyways, uh, let's move back over to the hydroponic system. Looks like this irrigation tubing that I had stuck back here fell out, so let me put that back in really quick. Just gonna leave the tower right here while I do that. I don't know what happened to this stuff, but I had it stuck back pretty far. I blame squirrels and other rodents because <laughs> they have been a major problem lately in the, in the garden. Um, they, I had a raccoon come in over the weekend. We had a raccoon come over the weekend and uh, tamper with the aquaponics system and cause it to crash. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> So what we're going to do next is we're going to top up the hydroponic system with fertilizer. Do you mind getting the hose in, Ellie? So this stuff is pretty much out. Um, I like to use fish emulsion. A uh, combination of fish emulsion and other nutrients to get adequate amounts of potassium and phosphorus. So I've been using fish emulsion. Bat guano for our phosphorus. Where's the seaweed? I have the seaweed in here. Where'd it go? Aha, seaweed. Oh, yeah. And uh, maxi crop seaweed powder for our potassium. And so, if we combine these in the right ratios, then we'll get the right NPK for our plants. And so, I kind of just guesstimate usually. Um, you don't really have to be very precise with it. You can. It can be an exact science if you want, but it doesn't have to be. Um, so next what we're going to do is we're going to test the pH and the electrical conductivity of the system. And also we're going to get this out of the sun so it doesn't overheat again. All right. I'm going to get my test kit. So if you have a hydroponic system, I recommend testing the pH and the electrical conductivity at least once per week. To test the pH, we use an indicator solution. So in order to do this, what we do is we draw a sample of, of water. I like to wash it out once and then at least once, once or twice usually, and then draw a sample. So we have our sample. And then I'll take the indicator solution. We'll put three drops. And then we'll read the results. And there is a key on here. And as we can see, we have a pH of just under five, which is a bit too low. Uh, so the tap water here is pretty alkaline, which means one of the things that that means is that the tap water has a high pH. And so we could pretty much just add tap water and then check the pH again in a few days to make sure it's right and then make any adjustments as needed. And then we're good to go. Uh, so the thing about organic fertilizers and hydroponics is that they tend to lower the pH of the water. Uh, so you may not need to actually add any acid to bring the pH down because this is something that you have to do in hydroponics. You have to adjust the pH to the right range. Uh, to ensure that the plants are able to absorb all the nutrients that they need. Uh, because the solubility of nutrients and therefore their availability of the plants in hydroponics is affected by the pH of the water. So what can happen if the pH is out of range is certain nutrients can become locked out. Uh, they can precipitate out of solution and become unavailable to the plants. So, um, normally with fish emulsion, um, you don't put that much. You don't really need a lot of this stuff. But before we do anything, we're going to test the conductivity uh, with this probe right here. Um, this is a way of measuring the nutrient concentrations in the system. Uh, so, and I'm going to change the units to EC. You can use other units like PPM, but I prefer to use EC. So, our EC... Uh, something's up this thing. I think it, it thinks I'm calibrating it. I'm not trying to calibrate it right now. 
There we go. Oh wow, so we're at 2.6, which is way too high. We want about 1.8. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a half dose of nutrients to the system. And as you can see, the plants are suffering a bit from it. We also had something happen with this tower over the weekend. These plants look really great. Uh, nothing is wrong with these really. Um, but with the bok choy, they're kind of suffering a bit. So we're gonna make sure we get the nutrients right so that we don't have further issues. Um, yeah, I think the tower got clogged over the weekend and uh, or at least at some point, and uh, I came back to a lot of dead plants. These ones survived, um, and so that's why it's important to monitor these systems daily. They do clog, um, especially if you if you have a lot of leaf litter and stuff around. These are seed pods from the tipu trees that we have over the garden, and uh, they just rain leaves, they rain flowers, they rain seed pods Everything. all the time almost and uh, it causes the system to become clogged up. So um, we need to make sure that we're checking our systems daily and that we're checking the pH and the EC at least once per week to make sure that they stay within the proper range. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the appropriate amounts. Uh, so normally with this stuff, I will add about a half a cup. Uh, so we'll do a um, quarter cup. Half a cup to a cup, it just kind of depends. Um, I think the dosage I normally have for this is like about two thirds of a cup. Uh, so we will add, let's do three eighths. And this is fish emulsion. It's made from fish guts uh, that are left over from processing fish into fillets. And it is really good stuff. All right, that's good. And so the bat guano, we're gonna add half as much, roughly. And this is how you do or hydroponics organically. So I actually think I need to wipe this off. Yeah, I'm getting fish guts on my shirt, but I don't care. <laughs> it does not stain, it'll wash off. Let's see how we're doing here. There we go. Can see better that way. So I'm going to add a heaping eighth cup. And that ought to be good. That'll get us a good p value. Um, and as for the seaweed extract, I need an even smaller measuring of the measure. In fact, I'm just going to do a tablespoon. The seaweed extract is extremely concentrated. As we can see, this is a 0017. So we really want to be minimal when it comes to this. So four, you can see, just dried seaweed. It has a really funky smell to it. All of these things do. Organic nutrient smell. Add some humic acid, have some humic acid. Maybe we can add some humic acid too. Mm -hmm. I like to add rock dust and humic acid sometimes too. Uh, humic acid is a chelating agent, which means that it'll bind the nutrient ions, the actual like chemical constituents of the nutrients, the mineral constituents, um, and make them easier for plants to absorb. So let's see if I have any of that. I don't see it, but that's okay. So we'll just add the rock dust this time. So azomite rock dust, this is one of my go-to things that I use for everything. Um, and this will give you pretty much all your micronutrients. Um, it says 100% natural, 67 trace minerals and nutrients, proven to increase plant yields, growth, and production. And it does, it, it is 0, 0, 0. 0.2, that's our NPK, so a very weak source of potassium. So we're not really adding this for the potassium, we're adding this for the nutrients. So I'm going to add two teaspoons. 
for the, for the micronutrients, I should say, the trace elements. Yeah, that's about two, so we're, we're good there. All right, and so in organic hydroponics, we want to do our best to use dechlorinated water because um, in organic hydroponics, how it works um, is we add our nutrients to the system. They're organic nutrients, so most of the fertility in there is not immediately available. Most of the nutrients are not immediately available to the plants. Um, and then what we will do is we will have bacteria in the system. I believe we're probably going to have to add those bacteria initially. Uh, I like to just use worm castings to add the bacteria because a lot of the same bacteria that we need to, decom to, to mineralize these nutrients and break them down are present in pretty much any kind of compost. Uh, so I'll just add a little bit of really good compost or worm castings and uh, then some molasses when I'm first in introducing the bacteria to the system because that's like a food source for them. Um, and then we'll add the fertilizers and then the bacteria will break down these fertilizers into their constituent elements so that the plants can absorb them. And so bacteria do not like chlorine, as you all know. Uh, so we do not want to use chlorinated water if we can help it. So let's fill this up now. Um, and Allie, do you mind running the hose until there is no hot water coming out of the end? Because we do not want to put hot water into the system. Let's check it out. We'll take another look at our plants right here. These are our plants. Tender green mustard. Mustard greens are delicious. I don't care what people say. <laughs> um, and a variety of mustard greens that I really like to grow is called Komatsuna. It is a variety that is not spicy and it's oftentimes also called mustard spinach. And I'll just show you guys what else we have in the system here. This right here is common mugwort, Artemisia vulgaris. Definitely my favorite medicinal herb. Um, well, not this variety. This variety is my favorite. The native variety, right here. That's my favorite variety of mugwort, but I like mugwort in general. Um, it does have a very bitter flavor, um, but I enjoy drinking it as a tea. It has calming properties, anxiety relieving properties, and also is good for digestion in your stomach. If I'm having stomach pain, I'll pair it with lemon verbena or lemon balm, maybe some mints and a tea, and I'll drink it and it helps my stomach feel better. This is not a recommendation for any kind of treatment for a disease or health condition. So I'm just telling you what I person personally use um, the mugwort for, and that is a legal disclaimer. So now that we have all of our nutrients added, we are going to fill the system with water. leave it. This is 35 gallons roughly. And once this is all filled up, we'll retest and then we'll consider it done. 35. And so the amounts of fertilizers I use are calculated approximately based on the uh, water volume of the system. Because what you want is a target concentration. So you want to add a certain amount of nutrients per gallon of water, per unit of water, whether you're using, whether you are measuring in terms of gallons, whether you are measuring in terms of liters. So in this case, it's 35 gallons. And for a lot of these fertilizers, um, it's like one or two teaspoons per gallon. And we're running a half dose right now because the conductivity measurements are already very high. Uh, so we'll just add a half dose and call it even. This is done, pretty much. I mean, I'll just dump the rest of this in here. There's not that much. Yeah, this stuff I like too. This is more balanced. The NPK is more balanced. I've run this system off of just this stuff because it's pretty balanced. But uh, it's better to make a custom formulation for like whatever you're growing when it comes to hydroponics. So that's trash. This 
fisher molson. We're going to put it away. And I'll show you guys what the molasses that I use to stimulate the beneficial bacteria in the system. Unsulfured blackstrap molasses. That's what I recommend. Uh, and this is when you're starting an organic hydroponic system, just to feed the microbes. Um, starting an organic hydroponic system is extremely similar to brewing compost tea. It's basically the same process. You just want to introduce your fertilizer, you want to introduce your food source to stimulate the microbes and grow out their populations, and then you just want to get the pH right. And then pretty much you're ready to go. Um, I usually give it a couple days before adding plants when I'm starting a system like this, uh, but right now we're just adding more fertilizer the biology in the system is already established. Um, the bacteria are living on all surfaces of the system, pretty much that contact water. Um, and uh, they are helping digest the nutrients and make them available to the plants 24 seven. And so if the pH of the system is not correct, um, I like to use phosphoric acid to bring it down or potassium hydroxide to bring it up. Um, I also sometimes like to use a mixture of calcium carbonate, which is basic, basically just powdered chalk um, and a potassium bicarbonate, which is chemically very similar to baking soda. And um, everything we use is all organic or food grade in these systems uh, because we don't want to have any contaminants. So certainly not something you want is contamination. And uh, once this is all filled up, we're going to turn the power back on and. and fire up the system again and in a couple weeks we're gonna have some beautiful delicious mustard greens. Mm. I think the bok choy is gonna come down on Tuesday. All right. And this stuff, uh, I don't know if the food pantry can use this stuff but they can certainly use the chart. Okay. Mm. Does anyone have any questions? Always, any time is a good time for questions. There are no such thing as stupid questions. Exactly. <laughs> so what do you want to grow in this system, Anelli? Are you guys growing carrots on here or carrots, carrots? What? Carrots? No. No, you cannot grow root no. crops in these systems. I mean, you can grow radishes, but they usually turn out all funky. Oh, okay. Like weird <laughs> shapes. Like leafy greens, yeah. Yeah, if you want to grow radishes in a non-soil system, then you're going to want an AVS system, which is a sand bed, and that's only done with aquaponics. Okay. Um, and you can grow any root crop in that system. You can grow potatoes in that kind of system. Okay. Um, you could also grow potatoes in aeroponics. Okay. Um, now, and disclaimer, I don't want to have people uh, buying tower gardens because they call their system an aeroponic system thinking they can grow potatoes in it. You cannot grow potatoes in a tower garden because <laughs> it is not an aeroponic system. Yeah. Where do you like to grow on these? Um, I like to grow bok choy. I like to grow mustard greens. Mm -hmm. I like to grow lettuce. Um, I like to grow... Another thing that I haven't grown in a while that I'm getting is called minutina. It's uh, related to the plantain, which okay. is like a common garden weed, not the like banana plantain, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the, the weed plantain. Okay. Um, and it's a perennial leafy green, and you plant the towers once, and then they go for like a year. Okay. Um, I like to grow strawberries in these towers too. Um, I have grown tomatoes in them. Mm -hmm. um, mixed results. Okay. But like 
dwarf tomatoes. What? I've uh, dwarf tomatoes. I've grown micro dwarf tomatoes in them, yeah. um, and uh, they will produce. But in my opinion, it's not worth it, and you'd be able to get a lot more tomatoes if you use a different method. Okay. Hydroponically speaking, mm -hmm. or aquaponically speaking, like those media beds over there where we're growing the tomatoes. Yeah. That's one of the best ways to grow tomatoes in these kinds of systems. I mean, it's pretty, pretty yeah. obvious. <laughs> tomatoes need a lot of room for their roots, and these towers do not provide a lot of room. Uh, so you're only going to really want to grow like small crops in these towers. Um, I'd say like even chard can get too big sometimes. Even bok choy can get too big. What about lettuce? Can they get too big? Lettuce, absolutely. I've seen lettuce. I've seen romaine lettuce get a bit too big, but okay. you know that's if you let it go past the time when you should harvest it usually. Mm -hmm. So we're getting to the top now. I'm just going to mix this around. I want to make sure that this is evenly homogenized. I want to homogenize our nutrient solution. And so what I like to do sometimes is I'll turn the hose to jet mode. Oh, uh, yeah. It's also a good way to clean off the... This is a good opportunity to do that. It's okay if some of these seed pods fall in. It's organic hydroponics. Synthetic hydroponics you want to keep pretty sterile and free of debris, but organic hydroponics, it doesn't matter. At least not too much in my experience. We're just going to get this all nice and mixed around and incorporated. Um, we're going to retest the EC and pH. So let's see what we're at now. We won't know, like, yeah, we're at 1.3. So uh, 1.3 is too low for veggies. Uh, but what's probably going to happen is all the nutrients in the fertilizer are going to be mineralized and then it's going to go up because okay. we have a lot of solid the nutrients are like solid mm -hmm. at this point and um solid nutrients like in, in solid particles that are like colloidal like suspended or whatever are not picked up by this uh, so we're going to see more nutrients become available and the ec is probably going to go up um, as for the ph let's do the ph test one more time So that's actually perfect. That's six. So, but it's probably going to go down because also, uh, usually as uh, nutrients are mineralized, uh, they will release hydrogen ions, and that's going to cause the pH to go down. So it'll probably drop down to about five again. And so we just want to be wary of that. We want to check the pH again in a couple days uh, to make sure, and the EC to make sure that they're within the right range. But I think that we hit, hit the mark pretty well today. So that's it. And I also wanted to point out for organic hydroponics, air stones. Uh, we want aeration in organic hydroponics for the microbes because the microbes that are breaking down the nutrients are aerobic microbes. They require oxygen in order to live and metabolize the nutrients. Uh, so we want to make sure we provide them with plenty of oxygen and that's what the air stones are for and they are hooked up to an air pump. Uh, so now, before we start the system again, we're gonna put the tower back on so that the water doesn't spray everywhere. Just like that. That's it. Now we just turn on the power. There we are. I'm gonna take a moment to adjust the nozzles and make sure that they're not clogged. You might want to move the camera up top. That one's good. That one's good. That one's good. This one I'm not going to Alright. That's it. We have replanted a vertical hydroponic system. Yeah. Alright, let's check the time. How are we doing? 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. Perfect timing. Apologies that my phone overheated prior. I was not expecting that. We missed some of it, but at least we showed you guys how to plant the tower, which is what we said we were going to do. And we were also able to show you guys how to add nutrients to a hydroponic system um, and how to test the pH and the EC. So yeah, if you are growing in a small space, I highly, highly recommend hydroponics. It's very simple and easy to do. 
There's not a lot of work that goes into it. Uh, you don't have to be out there watering plants. All you have to do is maybe once or twice a week, check the pH, check the nutrients, and ensure that they're at their proper levels, and then just replant and harvest your vegetables and pop off the water. It's very simple and easy to do. Um, I would recommend starting out with synthetic nutrients. I don't like synthetic nutrients, but they are easier to work with. They are a lot easier to work with. So they're good for like getting a feel for hydroponics um, and making sure that you understand like how to adjust the pH, how to add the right amount of nutrients, how to do all the testing, all that stuff. Um, using synthetic nutrients is a bit easier, so it's, it's a great way to learn. Um, but I always recommend if you can using organic nutrients, the results are better in the end and it's better for the environment. Uh, so yeah, uh, we're going to call it. Uh, this has been a great live stream. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you guys. We'll see you next week. See you next week. We're going to be talking about how to start seeds and hydroponics next week. We already have some marigolds coming up right here. These are actually going in soil and this is our hydroponic seed starting table. Uh, so we'll be talking about how to use this next week. Anyways, thank you everybody. Have a great day.